Good morning, guys. It is seven o'clock in the morning on a Monday, and we're headed to get bonus. Okay, what else? Braces. Clancy's getting his braces on today. So stay tuned, and the next smile you'll see on this face will have braces. And he might be awake then, too. We're driving on our road, so. All right, braces, here we come. Clancy's trying to race me in. Let's have video footage of your braces appointment. All right, we're going in. Okay, he's out. Let's see him, bub. So you got the whole thing on, not just the tops. I thought it was just the tops. I know. Hold on, then we'll do it in the car because it's windy. All right, so we're out of the dentist. Let's or orthodontist. Let's see your braces. Because I don't know. Let's see your braces. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. So what they? How did it go? How do they feel? Tell me how they feel. Just weird. Weird. Do they hurt yet? No. Not yet. Okay. So what they give you? Got some soft foods for later. What's Got in there? Some chicken noodle soup, some macaroni, and some uh, apple juice or applesauce. And then tell you how to brush your teeth and all about your braces. Mm -hmm. Got you a t-shirt and some toothbrush, toothbrush, toothbrush and stuff. And now you're hungry. Uh huh. What'd they tell you you couldn't eat? What'd they say? Popcorn, hard candies, granola bars. Crunchy foods, gum. <laughs> Is your life over now? Yeah. <laughs> but guess what you can have? Lemonade. Milkshakes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Peace out. So, guys, the Spriggers are here today. So, I want to start off by showing you what these Sprigs look like. Um, these, this is a bale of, of coastal Sprigs. They were dug yesterday afternoon, so they're still very moist and damp. Um, these are going to get loaded on the Sprigger. I'm going to take you over there and show you what they look like. So, a guy on the back of the Sprigger is going to be busting these open, throwing them in the Sprigger, and then the Sprigger is going to going to put them into the ground. These were dug up out of the ground, like I said, yesterday and baled, and then. When it gets planted in the ground, that's basically a root system. That's gonna that's gonna take hold in the dirt and start to grow from there. And then hopefully by the end of the summer, um, this 30 acre field right here will be covered in coastal Bermuda. So that's the goal anyways. Okay, so I wanna show you the sprigger right quick. The guys have stopped to load up some sprigs so they can finish up. So this is a five row sprigger one. Two, three, four, five. I'm gonna show you all the way that works real quick. So the way this trigger works is when he takes off driving, he's gonna drop it down to the ground and this is gonna this is gonna go into the dirt and make a, a groove in the dirt, cut a trench. And then <clears throat> these chains here are gonna turn the live bottom in the in there. I'll show you the way it works. But then it's gonna drop sprigs out right through here in that groove that's cut by here. And then these discs here at the back that are in this V shape, close that groove back up and then the tires pack it and put it right in the right spot. This is the live bottom in here. So these are the sprigs. They'll get busted from that bale, spread out in here. And then this live bottom right here, this right here, will pull it towards the front and put it in the chutes where it needs to go so that we can drop it in the ground. So when they take off here in a second, I'm gonna get beside them and run and kind of let you see the way that's working. Okay, so I wanted to show you all another thing real quick. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you the, the fertilizer that's on top of the ground right here before they, they run over it and then show you what it looks like when they when they get done. So they're making their first round in the in the last part of this field. They're gonna make, make a loop all the way around and then they'll come back by here. But I wanna show you. When we look right here, these uh, these little white spots right there, that's all fertilizer. So we slung our fertilizer out over the field and I really would have liked to have like dished this back into the ground or used a field cultivator to turn it back over, but I don't want to compromise the moisture that I have in the ground. So um, to get a good stand, we want as much moisture as we can get in there so or keep as much moisture in the ground as we can so what we're going to do is 
when this comes around, I'm going to show you how those discs that I showed you underneath the, the sprigger, when they cover those sprigs back up, it's rolling that, it, it's incorporating that fertilizer back into the dirt. So, um, underneath there. So that's, that's, it's going to be fine. Um, you know, for where we're at, our ground is in pretty decent shape. Not the best it could have been, but definitely not the worst. I think my ground is soft enough and, and uh, it's got enough moisture in it. If we get a rain, there's a chance of rain tonight and tomorrow and then one again Thursday a couple of days from now or a week from now. So if we can get those rains like we, we think we're going to get or like we're, we're praying and hoping we get, we'll, we should get a good stand of grass. So the sprigger's going to come around here. I'm going to show you guys, you know, what this ground looks like. And then I'm going to jump in the buggy here and uh, a little quick shout out to my Can-Am guys really liking the can-am it's uh it's doing a great job for us um probably my favorite buggy that we have so here comes the guys i'm going to flip this phone around so y'all can see it come over and then i'm going to show you what it looks like nala come here come on nala okay so here comes the sprigger he's making the first round i showed you what that dirt looked like and then he's going to make this pass be a good example so we get over here and here we can see drops of little bits of fertilizer right there right there and we get over here we can't see those and then we can see here's a sprig there's a sprig there's a sprig you know, there's a few on top of the ground but for the most part they're underneath the dirt so he's just going to keep making laps and come by and we'll i'll get up a little closer and let y'all run beside it so you can see them dropping down in there the fellow in the back, he rides in the back the whole time, keeping that thing filled up, making sure that the sprigs are but the bales are busted into the sprigger, and uh, keeps it fed so that it, it keeps putting out what you need to put out. These are the packer wheels here at the back. There you have it guys that's how the spriggan's going this morning um they don't like much being done here they'll probably be done in around an hour or so maybe uh be finished up and they've already got another job to move on to to you know part of having being a custom farmer I, I would assume is keeping your equipment running enough that it's profitable for you so uh the guys that do this for us they do a lot of spriggan in our area and they keep their machines running running pretty pretty wide open as long as they can so um, all we're praying for now is a rain tonight and tomorrow. And, uh, what I'll really probably want to do when we get done with this is take a cultipacker and run over this because once that Bermuda grass grows in, you can't smooth it or level it out. I mean, you can, but it's just a, a real pain in the rear. So what I'm going to do is run a cultipacker across this and really level this thing out and get it good and smooth. That way, when the time comes that we decide that we're going to, if we want to bale it or you know, even just fertilizing it and weed killing it, those kind of things, we want to be able to do that without tearing up our equipment or other people's equipment. So we want to get it as smooth as possible. And so we'll run a cultipacker across it. Um, you know, we could run a drag hair across it also. The only problem I have with that or the issue is, and I don't think it'd be so bad here because the ground's pretty moist right now, but um, you can pull those sprigs up some. And if it turns off and doesn't get much rain, it, it won't grow quite as good. So I think we'll just cultipack it and see how that looks. After we cultipack it, we might run a hair over it if it doesn't doesn't end up uh, getting it as smooth and flat as we want it. But Okay, guys, so we're out here in our soon-to-be coastal field. We sprigged this. We put our fertilizer out on Tuesday. We've got the sprigger run through it on Wednesday, and then we got an inch rain on it Thursday afternoon. So... God's perfect timing. God, it's all by God's grace. It's nothing that we planned. It didn't work out that way for us because of anything other than God's grace on us. But 
when we look at this field, if you look across it here, you can see it's got lots of ridges in it, and it's still pretty soft. Um, you can see down in here where the where the water set, but if we open it up, I mean, it's still pretty, it's damp right there. So when, when we knock this crust off here, you can see that, that there's some good moisture in there. I mean, that inch rain really did it some good. So, but when this thing takes off with coastal, I can't change the landscape anymore, meaning I can't smooth it after, after that. So probably one day this week, it's probably firm enough now that I can run across it um, in the next day or two. I'm gonna take a, a hara and run across it. And what that hara is just a big drag. I'll, I'll get a, some video of it when we get out here. But just try to knock these ridges down and smooth everything over where, it, where it'll be good and smooth because from that point on, you know, from now on when, we're, when it's finished, when it takes hold in grass, we're gonna wanna be able to run across it and fertilize it, kill the weeds in it, cut and bale it for, for hay. So. We want it to be smooth as we can. There's gonna be some rocks in it and after it establishes, we can run a, a rock rake through it and kind of roll some of them rocks up and get the rest of these smaller rocks picked up hopefully, but I'm not too worried about them. Um, we got a lot of the big ones picked up, but yeah. It's got some warm more warm weather coming this week, so it should, should really do good. All right, so here's the polka packer. I'm going to stop walking so you can actually see it. Wind blowing, of course. Alright, hey guys, it's Cody from Bar 7 Ranch. So today I am going to go up and drag the field that we sprigged in coastal um, with this drag hair. Let me pick it up, turn this around, and show you guys. So this is a drag hair. It's a chain, kind of some big chain looking things. <clears throat> you can either drag it laying like it is, and this is the smooth side down, or if you flip it over, these these little teeth looking things right here, they can dig in and really get down in the dirt. But I don't want to do that because I'm afraid it'll pull my sprigs out. So the first thing I want to ask y'all is when you do, do you absolutely hate to borrow stuff from people? Because I do. I don't like having to ask to borrow stuff, but lots of times, like I'm only going to use this for four or five hours a day, and then I'll never need it again, more than likely. So what I mean by, I, I couldn't justify buying this piece of equipment to do what I need to do today because I don't, I, I'm not going to use it enough, so I had to borrow it. I, I, I've got a, an uncle that farms and ranches, and he, he allowed me to borrow this today. But the question I have for you is, and I want you to be honest with me. Are you the type of person that borrows something and takes it back better than it was? Or are you that old sorry scoundrel, that sorry dog that just brings it back and it's just how, you know, oh, it, it was broke. I didn't notice that or I didn't do that. It was fine when I dropped it off. So um, I want to show you all a few things right quick <coughs> on this drag right here. So here we go. All right. So this part of the drag is, is just worn into and broke. Um, it's supposed to be attached with the link right here. Here, this one, the link is broken, gone. This one, the link is is kind of, it's kind of heavy there, but you can see it's come loose and not doing its job. So I'm gonna spend a little time this before I get over here and start dragging. I'm gonna take my welder. I'm gonna weld this back together right here. And then I bought some links. So I'm gonna put a link here, a link here. I'm gonna cut this link off and put a new link in there. My uncle's so, a very good farmer and rancher, and he uh, normally his stuff is in excellent condition, but he's been using this already this season. Um, so stuff just breaks and wears out. That's just the way it goes. So, But I'm going to spend, you know, maybe 30 or 45 minutes up here fixing this and getting it fixed right so that it does a good job for me. I'm going to take it back to him in a better shape than I found it. Um, so let's get started on that. I'm going to probably leave this on. It may get loud and stuff, but uh, I'm going to try to set you up over here maybe where you can see what I'm doing a little bit. I'm gonna take my, my grinding wheel or uh, wire brush wheel and, and kind of smooth this up a little bit and then get the welder cranked up and get to welding. So I'm gonna use today, may or may not be the right one, you guys be easy with me, but I'm not a welder. 
I can weld, but I'm not a welder. So I'm going to use some 7018 rods to kind of tack this together and weld it up. And hopefully we can get it to where it'll hold. It may or may not, but it's the thought that counts, right? <laughs> Okay, so kind of got that tacked up. I'm going to spend a little time working on it. It's not perfect, but I'll get it fixed up a little bit better, and uh, then we'll go ahead and get the links put on. So stay tuned. All right, so I'm going to take this off. I'll put this on. i got to get the other hooter dooter that goes on here. Well, guys, I forgot the hooter dooter. So we're gonna go a different route. I'm just gonna grind it off. All right, prior to that, Let's see if this will help. Perfect. Here's a little guys I got to put on there to to attach it all back. See that don't really want to go on there, so we're gonna have to motivate it a little bit but i think i'm gonna try to get it on this part first then i can lay it on there and then i can motivate it on down in there so let's try that i want to try to find a, a spot where it's kind of narrow which there ain't really one but <coughs> look at that would you look at that that just went right in there didn't it now then we're going to do the same thing right here on this side just kind of motivate it down in there and we're going to turn this little locker upper deal. Maybe we ain't got too many things out of line where it won't. Oh, yeah. Right on there. Just like it was meant to be. That's good enough for the girls I date. We successfully got this drag put back together now. Very simple task. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to take the pickup and trailer up to the field. And then I'm going to come back and get the tractor. I'll unload it with the tractor, then hook it up to the tractor and drag. And then uh, we'll load it back up and I'll take it back. So let's go do that. Guys, so we got that unloaded, and uh, before I take off, I'm going to fill this tractor up with diesel. I don't know how much fuel I'm going to use on this. I doubt much. It's not going to take too long to do it. Um, I want y'all to drop a little. So check your math. See if you can figure out how many acres I should cover an hour if my implement meaning my drag is 16 foot wide let's say we're going to travel at six miles an hour i think i'm going to run about eight i'm going to see how it works but let's just figure figure it at six miles an hour 16 foot wide how many hours should it take or how many acres not how many hours but how many acres should i be able to cover in an hour and we'll assume there's no skipping or overlapping um, just for just for figuring sake so a little math problem there I'll give you a hint, there's 5,280 feet in a mile and there's 43,560 square feet in an acre. So that might help you out a little bit. I think I got about a half a tank. This is a five gallon can. 
So do a little figuring on that. Let me figure out, see if you drop a comment in there and see if you know how many acres per hour. Um, I'll tell you at the end of the video when we get done to see if you're right. I would be willing to bet most of the kids nowadays don't know how to do this, um, that equation, and maybe not some of you adults. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how many of you can figure that out. And that's kind of stuff that farmers and ranchers use all the time. I mean, a lot of math goes on in farming and ranching. You know, if you're figuring out application rates, putting out fertilizer or weed kill, um, spraying bugs, stuff like that, you need to know how many acres you're covering, how much, you know, if you're putting out so many pounds per acre, you need to know how many gallons of fertilizer you need and, you know, how much weed kill if it says to put a, you know, a half a pint to the acre, you need to be able to figure that out versus your application rate, you know, so lots of math goes into farming and ranching. This is a John Deere 5065E. It's a 65 engine horse tractor horsepower 65 horsepower at the engine um, that's not at the pto power takeoff if you're not familiar with the power takeoff is that's this little deal right here you may not can see it the way i got my camera set up but you got a shredder a tiller something that needs to be powered an implement that needs to be powered behind you this is your pto it, it'll you can engage it it turns and turns a drive shaft that'll turn whatever you're trying to run behind you here so, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give y'all a little walkthrough right quick. So what we're trying to do today is right here. So if you can see right in here, these low spots, and there's some of those all throughout here. It's not so bad right here. You can see it a little bit right here where the sprigger ran, right in here. We've already cultipacked this field. Um, and it did a pretty good job of smoothing it, but it's not as smooth as I really want it. So we're going to run this hair across it and see if we can't, can't get it to do a little better job. All right, let's see what she does. Let's see here. B3, B2 to B3 is about six, six or seven miles an hour. Let's try starting B2. Looks like it's doing pretty good, guys. Let me grab you and show you what's going on. All right, so you can kind of see how smooth this is looking here. You can see the right here's a good spot to see. So see the difference in where the drag's been and where the field, the the culture packer went. Um, still a little little low spot right there here here's what I'm saying is is that normally I would go round and around in a circle like I would do if I was going to spray this or if I was going to cut rake and bale it because that way it'll be smooth going the direction you're going when you're on a tractor this ground is pretty smooth anyways I'm just trying to get a few of these little little things out of there those little low spots um, so what I'm thinking is is I'm going to whoop around right here and then I'm going to go at a diagonal across this pasture that way. And what that'll do is, as I go across these low spots, it'll drag it from the high side. It'll, I think it'll fill them in a little better. So, and then it should leave it smooth enough that it'll be fine when you go across it with another implement later on. So, that's what we're going to do. And uh, I'll check back in with you when I get done, and uh, we'll see how things look. Hey y'all, so the 2023 coastal sprigging season has come to an end here at the Bar 7 Ranch. So um, here's this field. It's a little over 30 acres, right at 30 acres that we sprigged. Um, Erica may or may not have some footage of the cultipacking, but 
this has been sprigged, cultipacked, and then I used a drag hair to drag it. If you can, Mike can see some little ripples as you look down the, the rows right here where the sprigger ran. So we, we got it as smooth as we possibly could. Um, we've had about an inch and a half rain on it so far, so that's great. We built a little deal over here, a little piece of wood thing, and what we're gonna do there is every day when Erica goes on our walk, she's gonna stop and do a little video or take some pictures so we can pro see a progression of how things are going. Look at that. You didn't even see that, did you? Look at that ram's horn. Oh, yay, I love those. So, that's it guys, so we're gonna take y'all along on this journey to see how the grass grows. Um, we've got a chance of rain, two chances of rain this coming week, so that'll be great. Um, the mesquite trees are starting to put out their leaves, so that means that winter should be over, no more frost, no more freezes. So that'll be good. This grass will start growing good when the soil temperature gets up. Did you tell them that it rained after you harrowed it? Well, I told them how much rain we've had. So. The day we sprigged it, it rained an inch on it the next day, and then the day that we harrowed it, it rained uh, between half and three quarters of an inch on it that night. So things are, things are about as good as we could get them. The good Lord's blessed us with some good rains, and we've got everything done. Um, every time it rains, it's going to push up a few more rocks. But what I mean by that, it's going to settle the dirt, and the rocks are going to show. Um, that's just Central Texas, guys. We've got lots of rocks, and a lot of these rocks are, you know, if we had a rock picker, they're too little for a rock picker to even pick up. Um, the bigger ones, even some big rocks like this rock right here is a, is a great example. Oh yeah. So this rock I could pick up with the rock bucket on my tractor, but if I shake the dirt out of it and it turns like this, it'll fall through. So even a rock that big won't always stay in the rock picker that we have, which is just a rock bucket. So. Um, I'm not real worried about the rocks. Once the grass establishes and we, we can graze it off pretty short in a couple of years and take a rock rake and rake it all up and then go through and, and scoop it up with a bucket on a skid steer or a tractor. So, um, and most of the time when we're cutting hay, we're not going to cut it short enough that rocks like this are going to get broke or are going to break any blades or do anything on the cutter. So I'm not concerned about these little small rocks. We've still got some big rocks to go through and pick up. but. Um, I'm really satisfied right now with what we got so far. So I'll, as always guys, thank y'all for joining in on this video here from Bar 7 Ranch. We appreciate your views. We appreciate your comments. So if you've got any questions about what we've done here or um, just anything in general that we might could help you with or if you just got a question for us, drop it in the comments down there. As always, you know, we appreciate the old like and subscribe if you haven't, if you're not a subscriber to the channel yet and I'll keep ranching. There's old Nala dog. Nala. Nala. Nala, what are you doing? She's wanting to go over there and mess around with the neighbor's dog. Play with the neighbors. <laughs>